The murmur of atrioseptal defect is a systolic flow murmur across the pulmonic valve coupled with a fixed, split, second heart sound. Listen to a patient with an atrial septal defect. I will begin with three normal beats and then add the split second heart sound and finally the systolic murmur. The murmur and the fixed splitting of the second heart sound are usually heard best at the second left intercostal space with the patient sitting up. The opening between the atria that allows left to right shunning is acoustically silent. However, the increased flow across the pulmonic valve produces a grade 2 to 3 systolic murmur. Transesophageal echocardiography with color Doppler allows visualization of the shunt across the septal defect. The fixed splitting of the second heart sound is caused by prolongation of right ventricular ejection. This results in a pulmonic closing sound which is noticeably later than the aortic closing sound. Patients with a left to right shunt greater than 1.5 to 1 are at risk of developing right heart failure and should have their defect closed. Percutaneous closure of the defect is now possible in selected patients with secundum defects. Those patients who have their atrial septal defect closed by age 25 have a normal life expectancy. In summary, atrial septal defect is a common congenital lesion. The flow murmur across the pulmonic valve and a fixed, split, second heart sound are key findings in this diagnosis.
The murmur of a ventricular septal defect is holosystolic and often accompanied by a palpable thrill. Listen to a patient with a ventricular septal defect. I will start with three beats and then add the murmur. This murmur is usually heard best to the left of the sternum in the fourth or fifth intercostal space. It is due to the pressure gradient between the high pressure left ventricle and the low pressure right ventricle during systole. The intensity of this murmur does not correlate with the degree of shunting. In fact, a small restrictive ventricular septal defect, as shown here, can produce a grade 5 murmur, while a large unrestricted ventricular septal defect may have no gradient at all between the ventricles and hence no murmur is generated. Patients with a ventricular septal defect tend to be diagnosed early in life. This is because small ventricular septal defects produce a loud murmur and large ventricular septal defects precipitate heart failure at a young age. The murmur of ventricular septal defect responds dynamically to changes in afterload. For example, a hand grip maneuver will noticeably increase this murmur. Listen to the change in the murmur of ventricular septal defect with a hand grip maneuver. First at rest, and now with hand grip. Ventricular septal defect is the second most common congenital heart lesion after bicuspid aortic valve, accounting for approximately 25% of congenital defects. Most small ventricular septal defects will undergo spontaneous closure in the first few years of life. Many ventricular septal defects can now be closed with catheter techniques. Surgery may still be required to close large ventricular septal defects to prevent heart failure or the occurrence of pulmonary hypertension. Two-dimensional echo Doppler imaging can identify the defect in the septum and help guide interventions to close it. In summary, the holosystolic murmur of ventricular septal defect is heard at the fourth or fifth left intercostal space and is often accompanied by a palpable thrill. Listen once again to a patient with a ventricular septal defect. 